Okay, everybody. My objective today is to talk to you about Gardner CAV type starter pinions. There's a lot of confusion about these pinions here, and it's easy to make mistakes. Now, on the engines that we're dealing with every day, ALW, LXB, LX, and so on, there's two. The number of teeth varies by two. You have 13 teeth, which fits the six inch starter. And you have 12 teeth, which fits the five inch starter. Um, but the irony of it is that the six inch starter will also take a 12 tooth pinion, but the five inch is stuck with 12. Now, as you'll see here, they come in two materials, steel and brass. Now you'll understand that the brass pinion is easier on the starter ring gear, so these are preferred. But they're significantly more expensive than the steel one, so uh, it depends how you want to spend your money and on what's available. <coughs> so. Uh, the pinions, uh, they appear to be the same length, but you need to be careful because it depends exactly which starter you're dealing with. Uh, sometimes there can be a variation in length and you can get caught out by that. Some, uh, what I would refer to as oddball starters, like for smaller gardeners, 3LW, 2LW, 4LK, take a different uh, starter is a different nose on it and they can go down to maybe 11 and 10 teeth. What I'm trying to say to you is you need to get that right. The pinion has to be matched to the ring gear on the flywheel for starting purposes otherwise they'll not mesh and it's a complete mess. And again I've said this before I repeat it again don't crank a gardener engine. Don't crank and crank and crank and crank and crank hoping that she's going to start. A gardener engine should start straight away. Within five revolutions, she should start and go. If she doesn't, you've got a problem. You need to investigate that. And it boils down to she's not getting fuel. If a gardener engine is getting fuel, she'll start and she'll start easy. No problem. Okay, what else have I got? It's a helix of some sort. Which means that the pinion will only transmit drive in one direction. For example, on this one here, if I turn that, she does not turn the rotor inside. She's not turning it. You'll see that that's staying stationary. Whereas if I turn this way, the whole thing turns. Have you got that? So that's really important. It's particularly important whenever we go to remove the pinions and refit them again, as I will show uh, shortly. If we home in on these pinions, you'll see that the teeth have been filed down. I hope you can see that. You see that they're filed down there? Somebody has just taken the edge off. Now, I have been recommended by a real expert, a, a, a thorough expert on these starters, that that's a wise thing to do. But I myself, I find starters coming into the workshop a lot of them are not filed and it doesn't seem to make any difference. So again, the choice is yours on that. The pinions as delivered, you will see, are, are not filed. Well, they are a little bit. Yes, they are. They are a little bit. On the other one, someone has filed them a little bit more. Yeah, they are, they are filed. You'll see there, the edge is taken off them. This is a pinion, as you can see, it's quite worn. Probably work okay. Um, <coughs> it's quite worn. Possibly the the ring gear on that on that uh, the ring gear on that engine is a little bit worn. I don't know. There's probably a bit of life in it in it yet, but not a lot more. This is a photograph of one that's really very badly worn. Um, that's from an engine that we were working on in America. That tells us that the ring gear there is very. Definitely worn, I will need to be replaced. 
Okay, that's enough on the pinion itself. We'll go on now to show how you can take the pinion off and refit it again. Right. Okay, as far as taking the pinions off, I have to explain at the outset that very often it's not a job for the faint-hearted. You have to imagine that some of these Gardner engines can have been out there in the field for maybe 30 years and there hasn't been a spanner put on them. And sometimes they've lain somewhere, maybe in a hedge somewhere for years and years and years. A hedge somewhere for years and years and they're not in good condition. I mean, this is a typical starter that we have to deal with and you can see it's pretty sad. Now the chances are we'll fire that starter up and she'll work fine. But you can see she's quite rusty and the nuts that were on here were really very tight. Again, I think that's only a, uh, a, maybe a 10 or 11 tooth pinion there. Okay. So let's go to a starter that's maybe a little bit more civilised. Um, the first thing that you'll need is you need a thin spanner. And we've taken this one here. It's a standard 19 mil uh, spanner, but we've ground it down. I think it's ground down to about 3 mil or something like that. Now, <coughs> if you study in here, you'll see we've got a main nut, a castellated nut. And then in behind that, we've got a lock nut. Now, this is a wee bit unusual because usually the lock nut goes on the outside of the main nut. But on these starters, it's on the inside. So, it's important that you have a spanner that will fit in there. It must be able to move freely independent of the big nut. Now, there's a split pin in there, which, as you can imagine, is often... Uh, completely rusted and I will confess I have already taken the original one out but the first thing you do is take that split pin out or you might decide to leave it in until we've got the, the lock nut uh, slackened so I'll just put it back in there again just for the sake of uh, illustration right the split pin back in there now um, the first thing we notice here is that the pinion is free to move. This is really important. These nuts here should not be tight on the pinion itself. There has to be movement there. There's quite a lot in that particular one as you'll see. On others maybe there's not quite so much. So the lock nut has to be, has to be uh, moved down in order to let the top nut off. Right. Quite, right, quite tight. But I slacken that off. Make sure it's nice and slack. Of course, it goes without saying that you've sprayed penetrating oil on here. It maybe left it for a few days. Now, it can happen that these nuts are so tight and so rusty and so stubborn that you have to heat them. And this video here will show you. Um, it really needs a lot of heat. Just a gentle heat will do. And you can't really do much damage there because the pinion is well away from any fragile uh, items. Okay, so I'll confess um, we cheated a little bit here, <laughs> but eventually we got the, the lock nut off. So once we've done that, up comes the pinion. As you can see, we've got shims and funny things there, and you need to be careful they don't fall out. And we can put in we can put in the new one. There's nothing wrong with this pinion. I'm only using it for illust illustrative, illustrative uh, purposes. And put in our new. But eventually, it will go down. Now, I will confess, I cheated a bit here. It actually took me whoa, maybe 15 or 20 minutes to get the pinion back down there. It's really critical, the alignment between the, the pinion and the wee clutches that are down in there. Don't hammer it. You have to be patient. As I said, this is not a job you'll do during your lunch. It just doesn't work out like that. So, it should be pretty obvious that I can now pop back on my washer, pop back on my lock nut, You'll believe me on that, and 
pack, pop back on my castellated nut. Now, I'm not bored with that. The point that I'm trying to get across to you here is that both in taking these nuts off and in putting them back on again, it is a bit of a footer, I will confess, because taking the nuts off, it's, it's very, oh, <coughs> very difficult to avoid damaging these threads here. So getting the nuts back on again can be really quite a challenge. Um, you can, again, resort to heat. You can get a hacksaw and cut a slot in the top of the, the top of this thread here, which will allow you to get a screwdriver in. I think I've shown you this before. To get a screwdriver in here, which allows you to hold this thread steady while you're getting the nuts on. To be honest, I can't see any other approaches to that. It's not easy and you have to be patient. So I'm not too sure I've got enough luck more for you on these pinions and starters. I repeat, fools rush in where angels fear to thread. I'm quite sure that the experts, the real experts, have procedures for doing this, but I am not an expert. I never claim to be an expert. I'm just telling you what I've met in the past. So I hope you got something out of that and thanks a lot.